Marcus Ryle, uh, here we are at Oberheim. It's the big day, right? This is the big day, yes. It's been uh, several decades in the making. So, I mean, you know, I, I'm going to immediately yeah. cut to the star of the show. Perfect. Not that you're not important. No, but, yeah, please. This is... I'd much rather you have the camera on them, on that. So, the new Oberheim synth, I mean, this has got a great story behind it. I mean, this is, it's, it's proper, massive and chunky and looks like the real deal. So, tell us a little it's, bit. It is the real deal. I think that, you know, Oberheim has been such an iconic part of popular music for so many decades. I had the good fortune of uh, Oberheim being my first job. Tom hired me in... 1980, and from 80 to 85, we got to do some pretty fun synths. Uh, the OB series was a highlight, and uh, you know, Tom, Tom basically lost his company in 1985, and uh, this is, you could say, the first real Oberheim synthesizer since then that has the iconic name and logo and Tom's involvement, and what we've done is taken every facet of the entire OB series, the OBX, OBXA, OB8, and even the OBSX, and made sure that we have a 100% analog signal path and recreate exactly what those instruments could do. So it's really that whole lineage all built into one. Those were, the OBX, XA, and 8 were in succession an evolution of that family. And uh, here what's nice is this, this synthesizer it doesn't just have like three modes, like do I want it to be an OBX, XA, or 8. We actually put all the features in all at the same time. So you can mix and match um, if you want to have the OBXA's filter envelope, but you want to use the OBX filter, which is based on the SEM, and you want to use the OB8 um, mix of, of uh, saw and pulse wave with some page two delayed modulation. You basically pick any of the above. So you can now make, you, you can make all the sounds of the original synths. In fact, we even included every one of the factory patches from the original synths in their own banks. But you also can create whole new sounds because of having all the combinations, plus many additional features the originals didn't have that we were able to put in That's all in analog, so you've got all the envelopes and stuff, are they digital? The the envelopes, it was actually much, uh, gave us much more control to do the envelopes digitally. Um, What's great is, you know, the envelopes don't make sound, envelopes control the sound. So the signal path is 100% pure analog. But by doing the envelopes in digital, um, and essentially being able to have a, a, uh, it's a very high sample rate, very high resolution model, we can model all of the characteristics of the different envelopes. Um, it happens to be one of the key differences between the OB series. All of the OBs used Curtis chip 3310s for envelope generators, but the way they were configured makes it that the OBX and OBXA envelope shapes are actually quite different than the OB8's envelope shapes. So again, here you can, you can choose which you want to use for any given sound. Um, I guess that the word sound is probably a key, a key point to have you actually play something on this. I know it's not your, your primary function, but you know, it would be great to hear something as well. Well, yeah, maybe where we can start is showing you how in the, the bank selections, there's going to be 128 presets in the OBX8 bank, which is where we're taking advantage of all the, the new features. But there's a OB8 bank, all the original presets, OBXA, OBSX, and OBX. Um, so, and, and you can actually kind of hear the evolution of, of these, uh, these presets, starting with, you know, when the, uh, the, the original OBX brass sound. It evolved oh, nice. from is there. there. Is there voice panning in there? <laughs> yes, you have, uh, you, all of the OBs had uh, manual panning. In the OBX and OBXA, it was actually a pan pot on the inside You'd have to open it up to set your panning, and then you set it and forget it. On the OB-8, we put the pan pots on the outside, on the side panel, yeah. but it was still manual. So now what's great is it's programmable, so you can decide, do you want it mono, do you want it to alternate left, right, do you want it to move across? Nice. You can uh, set what you want it to be. Um, that's a beautiful brass sound, I have to say. It's yeah, that's, so a, that's just says Oberheim, just when you hear it. And of course, if you go to the OBXA bank and listen to um, the brass ensemble there, it's, it's, a, it's a little different. You go to the OB8, and here you can hear 
hear this, we, we put a little delayed modulation on it, and it's using the Curtis filter instead of the, uh, the SEM bass filter. So these are, these are important, you know, subtle but important distinctions. Yeah, different people have different favorites. You know, some people swear that the OBX is the best of the bunch. Some people love the flexibility and capabilities of the OB8. Here, we just decided you should just have it all. Yeah, I mean, ambitious. You didn't kind of, you didn't just go, <laughs> let's just make it look really nice and be like one of them. So yeah. No, that was it. Was critical to be able to get it completely perfect. I mean, that really was the test. Is we actually can we can read the original cassette data from the original factory tapes. For, for those youngsters out there, this is before computers, before floppy disks. Well, you had floppy disks. You, you didn't have home storage. You didn't have USB or memory sticks or anything. So the only way to save your hard you know, work of sounds on an OBX or XA or 8 before MIDI was by saving the digital data onto a cassette tape. So we can read those original cassette tapes and we've loaded in those original banks, and and the test is to just ABM from the originals. And I've got, I do thankfully have all of the originals. Have you got to the point where you can hear the actual raw cassette data and know what the patch name is? <laughs> Can't you? You can tell which machine it is. The you know the, the mainly because the OBX tape is quite short. There were only 32 presets, and um, and there was it was actually. You, each preset, if I recall correctly, it's you could store. I think it's just 16 bytes to store all the parameters. Wow, it yeah, was, so you gotta, it's you pretty crazy. Be, very compact. Yeah. And of course, once we went to 120 programs and splits and doubles, the cassettes got a little longer. So but I um, can't. I can't hear the bits. I, I have to admit. Oh well, I, I'm disappointed, <laughs> but you know it's understandable. So um, we got some more sound. I think that brass is sure. Lovely. You know, here's like a classic OB8 sound that was on a lot of records called Saint Genevieve. <laughs> This kind of showed off the page two features. In fact, this was this was a preset written when we originally did the synth. Uh, Michel Dwadik was one of the key engineers on the OB8, and he uh, he originated a lot of the page two feature ideas. And he wanted to do a preset that would show off those capabilities, having you know different filter envelope from a pitch. There's a little pitch bend, and there's the delayed vibrato. And a sound like this is, it's seeming, uh, it's deceptively simple, I guess you could say, but to get it to sound like the original requires that all of the modulation elements are captured exactly right. Of course, um, classic overhead strings. You know, and now you can do things you could never do before. If you wanted to put the, some, a filter on aftertouch, you know, none of the OBs had uh, velocity or aftertouch. So now we've got it easily. We can. These, these are. I mean, they sound lush. Uh, there's no effects on this, right? This, there's no effects at all. This is just the. Uh, the original sounds. Here, let me see if I can. I have to remember where some of these presets are. So, are there effects on the unit itself? I mean, it, no effects not, at all. Just, just like just the original. Right, you, uh, the assumption is you. You know, you. Everyone has their own particular taste in effects, and just like just like the the good old days, we just figure that's something you're going to want to. Um, Add on yourself. Yeah, just give me an infinite reverb, and I'm happy. Pretty yeah. much. <laughs> I'm trying to give me a second here. There's, there's a couple other sounds that I don't remember where they are. I should have the list in front of me. You've got, you've got, you've gone for the regular control, the the, the original controls as well. Oh, wow. there you go. Polyphonic portamento stroke with the great resonant filter. Those kind of dri dribbly sort of chords, that are, yeah, lovely. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's great fun. And then uh, let's see if I can find. Where did you find buttons this big? I, I haven't seen them this large. For <laughs> We're very fortunate that the. The company still makes the large ones. I don't know who else buys them, but fortunately, we were still able to get them. So that's a uh, that's a nice plus. 
Let me see if I can find. There's one patch in particular I was going to show you because it, it shows off, again, one of the subtle things of an OB-8. But thankfully, you can edit all this out as yeah. I find my way to find my, this one, delayed octave. Um, so uh, one of the things that the OB-8 had that the others did not was you can combine the saw and pulse wave together. And uh, unlike a lot of synths, we were very particular about the phase and amplitude relationship of the two waves. Because if you have a pulse wave that starts out negative when uh, the saw, sorry, starts out positive when the saw is going up, and then it, at 50% duty cycle, it goes negative halfway through the saw. If, if you combine them, well, what you get is pure second harmonic. You're going to have the saw going up plus the DC offset of the square wave, and when it gets halfway, the square wave drops, and the saw drops again and goes, continues up. So this is a sound with delayed pulse width modulation. So you start out hearing that upper octave, you know, and then this is a very a classic OV8 sound that you really don't get on another synth. If I turn off the modulation, you can hear Yeah, so you can hear the harmonics. Right, and you can change uh, the relationship between the, uh, the amplitude of the, the waveforms because it turns out that the, the level... Ah, uh, yeah. The level match is different. So you turn on... That's, this is one oscillator. And you hear ah. the beating. Because if you're mo modulating pulse width, when you're combining it in this phase with a sawtooth, if you looked on an oscilloscope, it looks like two sawtooth waves beating. So you can have, now if you put on two oscillators, that's almost like you have four oscillators. Right, if, and if I, if I add more delay, by the way, I'm doing, all the page two features were um, hidden kind of on the OB-8. We had screening on the panel, but you had to really know what you were, you were doing. Here we have the advantage of a display, so if I want to change the amount of uh, mod 2 attack time, I can actually just find it here. Or I can change the delay time as well. So I can make it so that octave stays longer. And ev eventually, I guess I turn it too long. It sounds like it's coming in on note off. There we go. Yeah, that's lovely, isn't it? That's no effects, not doing any doubling or anything. It's just you still have eight voices of that kind of sound. Um, but again, what's exciting is to be able to mix and match that stuff. You could never do delayed modulation on an OBX or OBXA. So you can take, I wanted to hear that same sound. This, is, this one happens to be using the four-pole filter. If I wanted to change that to the SEM style two-pole, you can hear the difference. And we even threw in some of the old four voice filter modes. So if you want to hear it with, for example, a, uh, a sweeping notch filter. Sounds like an eminent, doesn't it? It's amazing, yeah. So, so that's a sound you could never do on the OB series before. Fantastic. So, I mean, this, this guy, I mean, are you, you know, the, the challenge for everybody right now is can you make them? You know, because yeah. it's like, <laughs> yeah, we've got one, uh, I can see two here. <laughs> so yeah, we well, this is where, you know, we have the, what's great about this new synth is this is a new exclusive partnership with Tom and Sequential, and Sequential knows how to make synthesizers, and they make them in America, and they've been really good about being able to source parts. They've, they have challenges like everyone does in being able to get parts, but this was designed carefully and uh, been worked on for a long time with uh, parts in mind and making sure that we're gonna be able to have enough parts to build some. I'll warn you, my prediction will be we won't have anywhere near enough parts 
to meet the demand there'll be for this, but they they will be shipping soon. And, ah, uh, right, okay. What's the, what's the price? Have you got a kind of US dollar price in mind for this? Is it fixed uh, yet? Uh, yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think the U.S. map is is going to be forty nine ninety five or something like that, about five thousand dollars. Right, it's a lot of analog synth there, so yeah. It's a lot of analog synth, but a lot cheaper than buying an OBX OBXA or OB eight. And then, the, and three. then the service plan. Right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Marcus, thank you so much. My pleasure.